waiting room. So let's go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone. I'm Jenna Travis. I'm a senior assistant director in undergraduate admissions, and I am joined by Dina Florido, who is going to be helping us in the chat tonight from our admissions team. And as we like to do, it's all about partnerships and we partner with all of our academic colleges. And I think I got the best group tonight. Um, we have got representatives from the academic advising offices at the College of Arts and Humanities, our College of Business, our College of Community Innovation and Education, and the Rosen College of Hospitality Management. Um, so tonight's session will run. We're gonna let each of the college representatives introduce themselves. And then we are going to ask them your questions. So please start adding your questions to the chat and we will go ahead and get started. So how about, let's go with the College of Business, Cassidy. I had a very strong feeling I was going to be first. <laughs> um, well, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We're very happy to have you here and share, share a little bit more about each of our colleges. Um, so yes, my name is Cassidy James. I am one of the academic advisors uh, with the College of Business. Uh, particularly our advising and student support office is called the Office of Professional Development. Um, so I am a part of that office. And um, so a little bit about our college and our office. Uh, I definitely believe that our college of business is very innovative in the way that we um, approach certain uh, initiatives and support resources for our students. We really try um, to holistically promote the development of each of our students. Um, so uh, we, we look at not only academic development, but we look at professional development and also that personal development uh, for our students. So, you know, not only do we have uh, the academic advising teams, which is where I come from, uh, we coordinate workshops and different programming to really help our students. Uh, but then we also have our own set of career coaches in our office as well. Um, and they're really there to help uh, promote the professional development for our students. Uh, so that's a little bit about our advising office. Um, we really, really try to promote engagement in our college, um, and hopefully I'll be able to share a little bit more about some of the initiatives that we offer in our college. But that's a little bit about me and uh, the college business. Thank you so much. Um, Dr. Garcia, how about you go next with the College of Arts and Humanities? Hi there, uh, my name is Delia Garcia, and I'm with the College of Arts and Humanities Student Advising Office. Uh, we call that CASA for short, C-A-H-S-A. -S -A. Um, in terms of the College of Arts and Humanities, we have uh, on the humanities side, a number of majors that are open access. So students who select one of our humanities majors um, are admitted directly into the major. Um, on the other side of the house, we have our arts programs which are divided between the School of Performing Arts, which is music and theater, and the School of Visual Arts and Design, which has a number of majors, most of which are restricted access. So for the students who are joining us today and plan to pursue music or theater, please be sure to admit to uh, audition as soon as possible. And uh, for, the school, for the students who are pursuing a major in SFAD, the School of Visual Arts and Design, uh, most of you will have to go through all of the co common program prerequisites before you're eligible for admission into a restricted major. So you'll have more time to work through that. Um, if you do select a college, uh, sorry, a major in the College of Arts and Humanities, um, you will be assigned a CASA advisor um, that advisor will stay with you throughout your four years at UCF, and we do hope to help you graduate in four years. Um, you'll also be assigned a major advisor um, within your department of your major. Um, and in terms of um, our expectations, we really just ask that our students be responsive um, when we reach out to you. Um, we have regular advising campaigns, um, so you will hear from your assigned CASA advisor each semester, and they'll ask to meet with you at least once. And so we just ask that you be responsive to those requests and come in and see us so that we can make sure that you're progressing and that your major is meeting your expectations and uh, that you're well on your way. All of our majors in the college have what we call high impact practices. So they're the types of activities that will engage you in research or internships or the types of um, opportunities 
that will hopefully segue into some career or graduate school opportunities for our students. Um, so uh, really, I just ask that you remember CASA. Um, we will be reaching out to you. We ask that you reach out to us regularly. Um, it's our role to help you um, succeed at UCF. And uh, we hope you'll take advantage of that. That is some great advice. I think all of our advising teams across the university and all of the colleges would agree. Be responsive when they ask you to come in and meet. They're here to help you out. So good segue. Let's, um, Mary Rente, how about what's going on in the College of Community Innovation and Education? Well, good afternoon. There's lots of things happening in the College of Community Innovation and Education. Uh, my name is Mary Renti and I'm the director of the Undergraduate Affairs Office for the college that we um, lovingly call CCIE because you don't want to have to go through what I just went through uh, telling you about the name of our college, okay? So um, our college uh, has um, a variety of degrees. Um, we have the education side, which um, teaches uh, elementary education, early childhood, uh, exceptional student education, secondary education, which um, has, as you can imagine, a long list of tracks from English language arts to social sciences to science and then tracks in biology, chemistry, physics, um, math, and then what we call teacher education, which is your art education, world languages, and physical education. We also offer a degree in career and technical education. And then, that's not all, then we have criminal justice uh, degree. We also have legal studies, uh, the health, um, the business side of healthcare, which is health informatics and health services administration. And we have three undergrad degrees under the School of Public Administration. We teach in two different campuses. So all the education programs and criminal justice their courses are taught in the main campus. And if you are interested in uh, health services administration, health informatics and information management, um, the School of Public Administration uh, or legal studies, those majors are available in the downtown campus. The exciting news about advising is that doesn't matter which campus you attend, we have advising services in both. So we have an office in the main campus in the education complex in the first floor, room 110. And we have an office in the downtown campus in the Union West building in the second floor. And you can select the site that you wanna go for advising. You don't necessarily have to be assigned to that campus. Uh, to receive advising. So I just want to um, pretty much repeat what Dr. Garcia just said. Please respond to us. We are always available and looking out to assist you. So you will have an advisor assigned from our undergrad affairs office. And you will also, when you um, reach the end of your sophomore year, you will also get an advisor from your department and faculty advisors also. So there's an advising team. Beauty of all of our degrees is that you get the opportunity to complete a practicum or an internship. In a lot of the degrees that I just um, listed, actually, you don't have an option. It is a requirement, it's mandated for you to graduate. So when you get an email from us or you get a phone call, because we also do phone calls, or you get a text, okay, please respond. We don't like to be ignored, okay? We want to help you because guess what? 
in four years, we are the office that will certify your graduation. So stay in touch. Great advice. Thanks so much, Mary. Our final college tonight um, is the Rosen College of Hospitality Management and our representative is Edwina Norvalis. Thank you, Janice. Thank you all for uh, attending this advising uh, panel session A. Um, tough act to follow with all of this great advice from all these different colleges. Um, so a little bit about Rosen College. Uh, we are um, the School of College of Hospitality Management and we are, I will, I have to brag a little bit, we are ranked among the top five hospitality schools um, in the world. So if you choose Rosen, great choice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> our degree programs range from hospitality management, event management, entertainment management, senior living management and uh, restaurant and food service management um, as well. Uh, we currently do have, um, at the moment, four undergraduate certificate programs. We have a certificate in information technology, uh, theme park and attraction management, professional tennis management, and managing the sporting events. Um, however, coming in this uh, new uh, catalog year, which has been long awaited and seems to be very popular for our current students, we will be offering an undergraduate certificate in beverage management um, as well. Um, so with Rosen College, we, uh, I would say our main campus is located in what we like to say in the heart of the largest learning laboratory. So we are down the street from SeaWorld, also down the street from the uh, convention center. Disney is not too far away, same thing as Universal. We have all of those attractions and restaurants on uh, International Drive, um, but we also have an advising office on the main campus. So um, if you are on main campus and when you would like advising on there, we do have an office uh, that can assist you there. Um, a little bit about Rosen campus, but we do try to provide, because we understand that it is a bit of a distance from the main campus, so we do try to provide as many resources as possible um, for you as well, such as um, an office for housing. We generally will have a representative from financial aid that will come in during peak times uh, on the Rosen campus, as well as a representative from um, student accessibility services to help out with any testing accommodations that um, you might need. Um, we'll also have a bookstore there as well and uh, uh, the library that is also affiliated with the UCF library. So um, yeah, that's a little bit about the Rosen College. Um, in terms of advising you uh, for your first semester as freshmen, you will have an advisor that will reach out to you in terms of a campaign. So like everybody was mentioning, please do not ignore us. <laughs> we will reach out to you. Um, and just try to help you become successful and succeed. And one of the tips that I will mention uh, that we generally like to say a lot uh, at Rosen is to become engaged and involved within the college, within your professors, with your advisors. Uh, there are numerous amount of student organizations that you can be a part of, and it'll just make you that much more marketable come graduation. If you have you know, student A that's going to class, getting good grades, doing internships, um, that's great, but what about those extracurriculars? What is gonna set you apart from the other student, right? So it's doing those other things, doing those volunteer opportunities. Uh, so that'll be my one piece of advice uh, for you guys. So thank you again for joining us. Great, I think everybody gave some excellent advice. Um, I hope all of the students and parents that have joined us tonight are hearing that we have resources and we have a team of people that are here to help set up your students for academic success. We want you to succeed um, and we want to certify graduation. We want to get you to that degree um, and out into your career field. So um, we've had some great questions in the chat. So we're going to go ahead and get started with that. Um, so our first one for architecture students, where are the classes located? So the uh, architecture program is a two plus two plus two program that's a collaboration between Valencia College, the University of Central Florida, and the University of Florida. And so the intent of the program is to take your first two years of prerequisites at the Valencia campus, and then you would go through the pinup process. And if you're admitted, you'd continue into the UCF portion of the program, which earns a BD, a Bachelor of Design. 
And then students have the opportunity once they are in the BD to either choose to pin up for the UF program, the University of Florida program at our downtown campus for the master's in architecture or any other program in the nation, frankly, students can pin up for multiple programs at a time. And in fact, we encourage it. So um, that's a very brief overview, but all of the architecture classes are taught at the Valencia West campus. So whether they're taught by Valencia faculty or they're taught by UCF faculty, every architecture course is at Valencia West. And for those of you that don't know, um, we have regional campus locations. So UCF actually has a building and teaches classes at Valencia West, Valencia East, Valencia Osceola, and some of our other campus locations where we have partnerships with our local schools. So there will be other UCF students there, I promise you. Okay, let me get to our next question here. I think we're back to arts and humanities again. Um, in the arts classes, including performing arts, will students outside the major be able to audition for the choirs and or some of the shows? So I'm gonna make a, a bit of a distinction. So it, that applies for theater and for music, but not the arts broadly. So students are um, welcome to audition for all of our theater, performances um, and all of the positions that theater offers um, without being a theater major or minor. A few years ago, the lead and I think our spring show was an electrical engineering major, um, apparently came in and took the world by storm. Um, but, um, and then in terms of music, uh, students are able to audition for all of our ensembles, marching band, any of any of the ensembles that we have that are uh, performance. So you do not have to be a music major or minor for those either. And I see your background is the Marching Knights supporting our UCF football team. So That's right. big That's fan, right. they're, they're a great group um, and very entertaining. Um, so Mary, our next question is for you. How does limited access help informatics and information management program work? Okay. Um, first of all, for that uh, program, you need to have completed all your general education courses as required by UCF and the prerequisites for the program. Once you have that completed, you apply to the program, you need to have at least a minimum overall GPA of a 2.5. Um, the program has entrance uh, twice a year. So they take application in the spring for the upcoming uh, fall. And then they take applications in October and you can start in the spring. So depending which of the terms you're ready for it. Um, they have had um, an excellent pool of applicants, um, but because they can start at two different times in the year, they're able to admit more students in the program. So if there's any concern that, oh my goodness, I, I won't get in, I will tell you that anyone who applies now, and if you do have the requirements, then you will gain um, admission. Uh, GPA is, is a big one, that is the minimum, 2.5, and you need to have, like I said, all the general education courses completed and their prerequisites, which if you um, go into our website or you go into the UCF catalog, you're going to see that it's a combination of um, the business side of the house along with uh, sciences. Uh, so it is not a crazy major, okay? This is the major that handles uh, the business side of healthcare when it comes to uh, information management of it and protection, including coding and billing. Okay. And just for some clarification, Mary, you mentioned um, some of your programs are downtown. 
Is that program downtown or at the main campus? No, that program, it is downtown. Thank you. We're very excited about our UCF downtown campus and we have several programs down there. Um, it's really within walking distance to all the great things that a downtown um, city offers. So some of our next questions here, this one's Edwina for you. As a hospitality management major and an incoming freshman, would you recommend you they live on campus at the main campus or the Rosen College apartments? Well, that's going to be up to you um, in terms of what kind of experience uh, that you would want. If um, I will say this, far as uh, the classes is concerned, uh, majority of about your two years would be at the main campus in terms of courses. You'd be taking your gen general education courses as well as um, some of the lower level classes, Rosen classes on main campus. But the further you matriculate into the degree program, the more the courses are only going to be offered on the Rosen campus. But really, you know, what kind of experience you want is going to determine which campus you're gonna live on. If you want that big university campus feel, you can live all four years on the main campus if you want to. Um, but if you want more of a smaller liberal arts, I wanna be immersed in hospitality, then you can do all four years on the Rosen campus. We do have a shuttle that does go back and forth in between the two campuses. So there is transportation that is provided for students and it is free. So you can utilize that or you can drive yourself, but you do have that option. And Edwina, you bring up a good point. UCF has an excellent shuttle system, not only to get you around um, the main campus, but um, if you need to go take classes at the downtown campus, there's a shuttle that runs back and forth to downtown, just like the shuttle that runs from the main campus to Rosen. Um, so take advantage of the shuttles. They've got Wi-Fi. You can um, study. You don't have to pay for gas or tolls. It's a great service that the UCF student government offers to all of our students to get between our campuses. Okay, Cassidy, it's time to get back to the College of Business. Um, when does one apply for their business major? Um, is that gonna be the semester after or prior to satisfying those general education courses? It's a wonderful question. Um, to give a little bit of background, yes, uh, the College of Business, we are a restricted access college um, like many of the other colleges have shared. Uh, essentially, that means, of course, you know, you do have to complete uh, a certain set of classes and meet certain GPA requirements before you are admitted. Um, the good thing about restricted access versus limited access is restricted access, um, so long as you meet that minimum criteria, you will be admitted. Um, it is also an automatic process, um, so there's not, you know, a, a formal application that you need to uh, have in place. It, we essentially run um, the admission process at the end of each semester, um, and, and students are notified whether or not they meet those admission requirements. Um, so to give a little background into what those admission requirements are, uh, what I kind of appreciate about um, our, our business uh, restrictive programs is that your first, assuming that students do not come in with incoming credit, um, your first two and a half years, two to two and a half years are approximately, uh, are pretty much the same across um, our restricted access business programs. So whether you're a management major, whether you're accounting major, finance, real estate, whatever it is, um, you're going to essentially take the same set of core classes, okay? Um, so you have the general education program, um, you have our common program prerequisites, which is, you know, for example, macroeconomics, microeconomics, um, financial accounting, managerial accounting, things like that. Um, and then so you'll move into what we call the business primary core. And the primary core, that's a set of five classes um, that kind of touch on the different avenues of business. So, um, you know, uh, even as an accounting major, you will take a marketing class, you will take a management class, you will take um, a finance class. Um, that's wrapped up in the primary core. Um, so those three sets of classes plus uh, what we call GEB 3006, that is the first class in the career professionalism series that's mandated for students. Um, though that is uh, essentially our admission requirements. Now, of course, the GPA, it varies based on um, what major you are. Uh, so we can always speak a little bit further um, moving forward. Uh, but so long, once you meet all those admission requirements, uh, you'll be automatically admitted um, into your major. So again, assuming that students do not come in with any incoming credit and must complete the full general education program at the university, um, that puts them at approximately two to two and a half years before being admitted. Um, just to clarify, some students have come in with um, dual enrollment uh, business AA degrees. 
Um, and essentially with that, that essentially will satisfy the general education and also actually those common program prerequisites. Uh, normally those, those two economics, the financial, the managerial and all of that, that's normally wrapped up into that business AA degree. Um, so for those specific subset of students, uh, they would be coming in and automatically taking the business primary core. So they would of course be a lot closer being, uh, to being admitted to their major, uh, but things kind of vary depending on what sort of income and credit that you have. Perfect, thank you so much. Um, so we've all been living in a virtual world for the last year. Um, but a lot of our students are interested to know about taking online classes. Um, what does the availability look like for online classes? Are you suggesting that for the fall semester? And what can students expect when classes start at UCF this fall? So I kind of let the different colleges, how they've interpreted that. Who'd like to go first? I, I, I can go ahead and take a stab at it. So okay. That I think generally university wide we've been advised that the expectation is that beginning this fall we will be back at our typical ratio of online to face to face courses. Um, which I think generally ends up breaking down to around 30% of the course offerings are online so. Um, I think obviously every student and every family has to make their own decisions about what works best. In some cases, um, you'll see that courses are offered in either face-to-face -face or fully online or what we call mixed mode, which is that it's a reduced face-to-face. -face, so it's kind of half online, half face-to-face. -face. But again, like particularly considering for any health concerns or anything like that, um, you, I think the main thing I would tell you is we expect to be somewhat back to normal for fall, but as you come through orientation, if you have any specific concerns or things that we need to keep in mind, I would just encourage you to make sure that you're you make your advisor aware of any constraints or concerns so that we can see. In a lot of instances, um, we, you know, some programs don't have a bunch of flexibility, but some do. And so sometimes we can shift things around a bit to, to accommodate as much as possible. You're hearing the same thing we're hearing, so that's good. Did any of the other colleges wanna talk about, are you doing the same thing? I did want to jump in to speak on behalf of the College of Business, um, particularly with our class modality. Um, so for this upcoming summer, I did see a, a question in the chat regarding summer availability and modalities. Um, for the College of Business, we will have uh, remote uh, virtual classes for the summer, but traditionally uh, the College of Business does not offer uh, any fully online classes just because we are an accredited institution. Um, however, um, like Delia was mentioning, uh, we do offer uh, what we call uh, or the real modality. So it's a version of the uh, mixed mode or uh, reduced seating modality that Delia was mentioning. Uh, so for our real classes, what those are going to look like in the fall is uh, there are going to be six in-person uh, sessions that students would attend throughout the entire semester. Uh, and the rest of the um, material is uh, supplemented via online modules uh, and content such like that. So it's almost like a flipped classroom environment. Uh, and that's the traditional modality for our business courses uh, for those admission requirements that I mentioned. So, uh, you know, like our, our common program prerequisites and our business primary core, they are offered in that very, very unique modality. Um, and it's really to promote a sort of active um, learning environment in the actual classroom. So again, that sort of flipped classroom environment. But I do like to mention that because it is a very unique modality. Um, and when we do talk about face-to-face uh, -face versus online, uh, that is something significant for the college business. Again, we don't offer uh, fully online courses, uh, but our courses will be one of those hybrid models uh, for the first set of classes that you'll be looking at. I think one of the nice things about UCF is the different modalities that classes are taught and you can kind of mix and match. You can have an online class, a face-to-face -face class, a mixed mode class. Every semester it can be a little different and work with your schedule. So you just have to work with your academic advisors. And I think all, you should have heard they're all ready to talk to you and help you plan out that schedule. So um, when you get to orientation, you'll start talking about how to register for your upcoming summer and fall courses. So we've got some other questions here. All right, hold on, let me scroll down here. 
All right, Mary Rente, in terms of becoming a teacher for the elementary and the secondary um, programs, how much field work or inter interactive classes are there? Or is there just student teaching? Um, well, let me address that in two, two different ways. Um, within the curriculum, uh, students who are pursuing uh, an education degree, that is what we call a certification track, which are students that once they graduate, they are um, pretty much ready to go into the classroom, into a traditional classroom, because our program is certified by the Department of Education in Florida. So those uh, students um, starting early in their college career have service learning type of uh, courses, introductory courses to uh, the education discipline. Um, at the same time, the last year of, uh, you know, their, their college career again, um, they will have their um, fall term of the senior year, a part-time uh, practicum, and then their last semester before they graduate, they have a full-time uh, practicum slash internship, whichever way you wanna call it, which it means that they will be pretty much the whole day, five days a week in the classroom. Besides that, um, we do uh, use in our um, curriculum in a variety of courses, um, avatars, which actually um, the college um, is the one who created this uh, way of teaching uh, students. And actually, I would tell you that if you go in YouTube, you will find a few of those um, kind of recreation of being in the classroom. You're looking at a huge screen and you have your classroom and your students there and you are teaching a lesson of course your faculty members there to give you support and to uh, give you some feedback but the program is set up so you feel that you're in the classroom and um, that is before you actually then get to go into your uh, senior year into your uh, teaching experience. So yes, there are many different ways that we have uh, endorsements also infused in the curriculum because some of our education programs offer um, students when they graduate a reading endorsement and also the ESOL endorsement. Mary, I will say I've seen that um, set up with the screen and the classroom and super impressive way to practice before you actually get in front of students. Um, exactly. A couple so. of years ago, we had a competition uh, among the deans uh, and they were given a topic and everybody had to try it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, technology is a wonderful thing, and you'll find a lot of technology across all of our academic programs at UCF, um, and it's a great way to teach and to practice. Um, so thanks for mentioning that. Um, Edwina, can you talk about the partnerships that Rosen has with Disney and Universal and other big names in the hospitality industry, and how does that incorporate into the academic programs? Well, um, yes, we do have those partnerships, actually. Um, if you come to campus, there are various places that are named after them, like the Universal Orlando Library or the Disney Dining Room, the Darden Auditorium, and uh, the Anheuser-Busch Beer and Wine Lab. So uh, we have these partnerships with uh, the, these um, different various part aspects of the industry to help with our students with our internship requirements. Um, so uh, as uh, was mentioned uh, previously with CCIE, uh, internships are required for Rosen as well. So uh, we have these partnerships with, with industry. Disney, for example, a lot of our students do their internships at Disney, at Universal. And those uh, jobs that we say, we, we call them internships, but they really are paid part-time or full-time positions 
within you know various aspects of the hospitality industry and those jobs do satisfy our internship requirements um, all of our students are required to do three internships whether you want to do all three of them in the same company for example as disney absolutely that is something that students um, are able to do um, but the internships are, are geared to help build your resume and build your experience so as far as you know working in attractions for internship one is great then you can you know either move over to restaurant for internship two or merchandising things of that nature um, at uh, also on top of that uh, we have career fair that we have separately on the rosen campus and this is where we will invite all the different partners within the hospitality industry to come to Rosen campus specifically uh, twice a year so generally once in fall and once in spring and students will have their career fair making connections networking with all of the uh, different um, industry uh, partners that we have and either you know get interviews that day or you know a couple days after that and get jobs you know so um I, I think i think i answered pretty much was there like a part two to that question that, that, that was great thank okay, you great. career fair is one of my favorite days on campus um i think it's great when students get to that point when they start looking at their career and their experience and what they're going to do to build that resume um, it's always exciting to see the students in their suits resumes in hand um, and a lot of our alumni come back um, and get to interview our students for jobs once they've gone out into the field and been successful um, so arts and humanities back to you um, for theater minors, can some of the general elective courses satisfy the 18 credit hours for a theater minor? Did you say can some of the general electives? The general elective courses, and I'm not in the academic advising world, so I don't know if that's general education classes. Can they sell? Maybe. Um, that can might they be. That would satisfy? be my. Yeah, that would be my best guess. Um, so um, if that is the question, um, yes. So there, the, the, the core theater class, TAG 2000, um, is a gen ed course for the cultural and historical foundations. Um, also satisfies other state core and uh, general writing requirements. And so I think I can say generally that um, just to generalize that question a bit, um, once you choose your major or your minor or whatever programs you plan to pursue, you're definitely gonna wanna work backwards because for the most part, all of the gen ed options are really just a list of courses for each requirement. And you're definitely gonna wanna make sure that you're selecting the best courses to um, get as many birds with one stone as you can. And so yet again, another plug for advising um, we, we know all the ways and we know how to economize. So um, every student's path is different and students combine very unique programs and majors and minors and certificates. And so we want to just optimize so that you're not taking courses that you don't need. Um, and it starts with picking the right ones in gen ed. And I'll echo that I've worked on college campuses for more than 20 years and academic advisors can interpret that catalog and help you strategically pick classes so you're meeting degree requirements and getting to graduate on time. So again, use your academic advisors um, when you get to Rosen. Um, so we'll go back to Mary. In the College of Community Innovation and Education, are there certificates available for students? Do you have any undergraduate certificates? We have plenty of them. Um, <laughs> uh, I think sometimes the joke is we invented <laughs> the undergraduate certificate. Um, depending on you know the area that you you know are looking into the discipline, or depending on the career path the student is is planning for, you will find certificates uh, within our college that may go along with your major or to be honest you could be looking at certificates and minors from another college within our institution um you know uh we're very well known because we have a lot of cert undergrad certificates within criminal justice but at the same time we have certificates within legal studies 
uh, the School of Public Administration, and we have a wealth of minors. And um, so again, it depends. Sometimes you're gonna see that an advisor in our office is meeting with a student. And when you look into it, they were advising them in like a minor in health services administration, but they were not our major. They may be a business major. I'm just gonna put a plug in there, okay? <laughs> or, you know, uh, vice versa, I'm sure. So everybody understands that you can minor or um, complete an undergraduate certificate within your undergrad career, and it doesn't have to be within the same college of your major. And that's why advisors are good, very good actually, to help you sort through that, okay? Definitely. And what's, I'll just throw this out there, what's the difference between a certificate and a minor? I can answer that. <laughs> Pretty much, uh, uh, first of all, the the good thing, and then I'll, I'll tell you the difference. The good thing about a certificate and a minor is that you complete both of them at the same time you complete your bachelor's degree, okay? Um, the major difference between a minor and a certificate is on credit hours, okay? Okay. All right. Again, ask about minors and certificates when you go to talk to academic advising at orientation and see what you can add to your bachelor's degree. Um, we've had a lot of questions about internships, and I know um, CCIE and Rosen College have talked about that, but let's open that up. Um, where are some of the students interning in the different colleges? What are they doing to get that experience and build their resume? Um, either volunteering or required for classes within degree programs? Well, I can kind of start about um, with internships. At the Rosen College, pretty much you name it, anything that is hospitality related, that is where they're interning. Um, restaurants, I've mentioned the theme parks, the convention center. Um, I've, we've had some students that have interned on cruise ships We've had like carnival crews coming in recruiting, you know, interns for that as well. So if that is something that you are, you know, thinking about doing, definitely take advantage of that. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be um, within Orlando or within the state of Florida for that matter. Uh, we have students that um, intern in California as well, New York, you know, different uh, various states within the US as well as international. We actually have uh, quite a few international internships um, in Japan. One of actually my favorite ones, it's, um, it's the Japanese Tourism Association where literally you are going there and blogging about the different shrines and temples and you get paid, which is really great. So um, yeah, um, one thing I do encourage the students to kind of, it kind of ties internships along with um, studying abroad because I do get this question a lot and I had to ask one of the internship advisors because we do offer study abroad opportunities for our students, whether it is for a, a summer semester or if you want to go for a whole like spring or fall semester overseas. And uh, the question I get a lot from students is can I intern wherever I'm at doing my study abroad opportunity and I had to ask that question to one of the internship advisors and they said absolutely. You just have to communicate. We do have three wonderful internship advisors that have connections uh, within our different industry partners, and they'll able to kind of figure things out, trying to see, you know, accommodations, how that would work if you're trying to do something international, but definitely reach out to our three internship advisors and they'll be able to, you know, help you get the internship that you want. Anybody else? business or arts and humanities? Sorry, Cassidy, I was gonna let you go. So um, the, the um, we have a number of majors that actually require internships as part of the degree program. So one example of that is theater and it, it mirrors sort of what Edwina just mentioned that our theater students are all over the country. So they, they're not limited to working here locally. We do have students who do some of the similar things um, to Rosen where they're working at theme parks or they're working on cruise ships. But basically 
um, those internships can be secured with any uh, theater company in the US. Um, we also have a number of internships um, with through the School of Visual Arts and Design. Um, we, since Rosen is on the call, we've actually just developed a new MFA in partnership with Rosen in themed experience, which is super interesting uh, for students who might want to think about graduate study in one of those areas. So um, most of our students in the arts and a lot of students in the humanities even do those. One of the projects that is super neat on the humanities side, since I've spent less time on those, is we had a, a student group that um, worked with our Cheddar department, which is our Center for Humanities and Digital Research. And what this group did is they went around to veteran cemeteries where there were unknown soldiers and they did the research with the history department to develop um, the biographies of those uh, soldiers and then worked with Cheddar to make it an interactive experience so that people who visit the cemeteries can log in and listen to an audio tour of the soldiers at those cemeteries. So there's all kinds of interdisciplinary activity happening um, in the College of Arts and Humanities. A lot of it is uh, born out of just individual experiences that and individual research that students do. That's amazing. I learn something interesting every day <laughs> when I talk to y'all about what our students are out there doing. Cassidy, what about the College of Business and internships? Yes, definitely. Um, so the College of Business, we really try um, to actually continue partnerships uh, with different businesses in the greater Orlando community, um, but sometimes even nationwide as well. Um, there, there. I know uh, a few people have mentioned internships while studying abroad. Um, that is a possibility. I know it's a little bit more rare, um, but it is a possibility in the College of Business as well. Um, little, little fun fact, side comment about study abroad. Um, the College of Business actually uh, sends more students abroad um, than all the other colleges combined. Uh, so that's just to show that we have a lot of really, really unique study abroad programs that we really try to promote because when we think about it, business is global. Um, but to, to kind of rein it back into a little bit more of a domestic area on the topic of internships, um, we actually, as I mentioned before, we have uh, our designated career coaches in our college, which is unique to our, our, our specific college. Um, but one of those career coaches is actually what we call an internship um, or sorry, an employer, uh, li our employer liaison. And our employer liaison really, really works um, more on the back end. So uh, the employer liaison doesn't really meet with our students as much uh, because she is working to um, maintain relationships with different employers um, and different companies in the area. Um, so different companies that students previously, you know, interned at or got a job with, things like that. Um, and what's really unique about that is uh, we are, Employer Liaison, she's one of the ones who run uh, Nightline, which is the exclusive job and internship platform uh, for College of Business students. Um, so when, you know, if you're a business student and you're on Nightline, you're looking at um, specific internships geared towards uh, your industry that you want to go into, uh, which is really, really a unique way to sort of, you know, customize your search, if you will. And again, everything that is listed on our Nightline site, it's uh, a... a for lack of better phrasing, a legitimate opportunity, meaning you know, you're not just going to be getting coffee. This is um, a position that our employer liaison has worked with the employers and really made sure to vet that position uh, to make sure that it is uh, applicable uh, to you know, our students' needs and to our students' growth uh, relevant to their career goals. Um, so uh, we've even had uh, internships with, you know, things like uh, Lockheed Martin, Harrison Corp Engineering. So even more of those like engineering companies, uh, we do still have uh, partnerships with them. Um, the College of Business and the College of Engineering Computer Science has actually partnered with a few things in the past, uh, which we're, we're pretty excited about. But we definitely have um, some wonderful, wonderful internship opportunities and not to mention not just that, but we also have wonderful support resources to help our students connect um, to those to those opportunities. We say in our college that we ultimately want to get you to the one, um, that's our slogan, that one being we want to get you to that one dream internship, that one dream job, that one, whatever that one thing it is that you want to achieve in undergrad or by the time you graduate, we're here to help you do that. Um, internships is often uh, a, a big one for our students, so we definitely have a lot of uh, support resources there. I will add um, the College of Business, we actually do not require an internship, but we really, really um, encourage our students to seek out internships. 
Um, and not only that, but we also like to brag about you all when you do have your internships. Um, so not only, even though it's not required, uh, we still want to know about those internships. You can still earn an internship for credit for our classes. Um, and we really, really try to make, help you all make that experience very meaningful and impactful uh, for your undergraduate career, setting you up to be, you know, like a, a marketable candidate when you go out into the workforce. Thank you so much. Can and I say Mary. something? Yes. <laughs> because uh, with internships, and I know that I mentioned with, um, you know, that our college has um, not only the availability of internships, but that a lot of the programs is mandatory. Mm -hmm. um, even in those programs that the internship is not mandatory, like uh, criminal justice or, or legal studies, they are um, available, highly recommended. And we have a lot of um, internship sites already set up. Um, and because as you can imagine, criminal justice, legal studies, a lot of government related um, internships. So we have, um, actually, if you go to the criminal justice uh, website in our college, they have all the information um, organized by uh, local, state, and federal. So you can see the different levels in government in different areas. Now, the other thing that I wanted to mention is uh, downtown campus and why we are so excited to be in the downtown campus. Um, and it is the great opportunity our students in that campus have to not only start building professional relationships early on in their college career that probably will end up in that internship and a job, a professional job once they graduate. Downtown campus is in the heart of downtown. Um, if you even look at a map in, of downtown Orlando, you're going to find Orange Avenue. And I love to say that in one end of Orange Avenue, we have Advent Health. And in the other end, we have Orlando Regional. And in between all that, we have local, uh, state, and federal government agencies. So you can walk from the classroom to your internship if you would like to uh, be in that area. Interestingly, even though our um, teaching degrees are not taught in the downtown campus, we have the Orange County uh, Education Department OCPS that it would take me, my office is in downtown, one of them, I could take three minute walk from our building to that building. And we are by the Paramore community and we have our education side of the house working with the local school. So we have many grants too. They're allocated uh, to that um, area. And we are always then looking for students, either volunteers or also there are some paid positions. So lots of opportunities available. Mary, I think that's one thing about the downtown campus. It's so close to a lot of things. You can walk in any different direction and you're connected to a variety of academic programs and career fields. Um, that's one of the reasons it was so exciting for it to open a few years ago. So we are about to wrap up this session. Um, I wanna let everybody know that it is being recorded. So if you miss something or wanna go back and review it, it will be on our UCF Undergraduate Admissions YouTube channel for you to view or share with a parent who might not have been able to join you or a student if they're out doing something um, for work or homework this evening. Um, we're sorry that they couldn't make it, but that's why we're making those recordings available. Um, our next ses session is going to be on living on campus at UCF. Um, the academic experience is vital and a huge part of going off to college, but so is where you live and the campus environment that you're in. So um, Sandy with UCF Housing is going to be joining us at 615 in the webinar. I'm going to put that in the chat so you have that link because you'll need to jump into a new link. Um, and if you're interested in some more academic information, we have the Burnett Honors College and the Lead Scholars Academy session that'll be at 715 tonight in the webinar. Um, 
I will give one last quick 60 seconds for all of our panelists um, to talk about orientation and encourage students to get registered for orientation and what that'll be like for your college. We'll start arts and humanities. I thought you might go back to alpha. Um, <laughs> so I was ready to jump on my 60. So um, a couple of things. So first of all, I wanna say that I think there might have been some questions that we weren't able to get to. So if you have questions about arts and humanities that I can help you with, please email me. And as soon as I stop talking, I will put my information in the chat for you all. Um, my biggest thing I would say prior to orientation, and it's actually a few quick things. Number one, it's okay to not know what you want to major in. And if you don't know what to major in, please choose undeclared. Like if you really, really have no idea, please go on to your student center and change your major to undeclared because that way we will be able to get you with a group of advisors who can start working with you from day one on trying to work out what you want your major to be, okay? Uh, number two, if you do know what you want your major to be or you don't, please bring all of your academic records with you to your Zoom sessions. Um, unfortunately, if you start with us in summer, we often don't have all of your AP scores, IB scores, all of that good stuff. And so we need to rely on your unofficial transcripts in order to make decisions about what's the appropriate level for placement. Um, and um, we look forward to meeting you. Uh, if you come to Arts and Humanities, you'll work with your CASA advisor at orientation. Um, and uh, we hope to see you soon. Okay, College of Business, Cassidy. So I do want to echo a lot that Delia said. Any academic advisor will definitely echo um, what she said there. I see Mary is also nodding her head there. Um, but in addition to that, um, you know, the for us in the College of Business, orientation is one of our first times to connect with you. And we really, really try to uh, connect with our students. We don't look at our students as numbers. We really look at our students as students um, and trying to meet their needs and, you know, push them to succeed in whatever um, we, whatever they, they hope to achieve in their undergrad. Um, so with our orientation, please, please, please make sure that you are attending uh, the presentations for um, our College of Business because uh, one, the, main or the main presentation that we will have, we also will lay out our engagement expectations. So just as all of us mentioned before, um, engaging is one of the most important and imperative things that you can do during your undergrad. Um, and we try to take an active role in, in encouraging that engagement for um, our students. Uh, so please, please make sure to attend those uh, presentations. Also, don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, college of business or not college of business advisors, we love talking to you all. We love um, helping you to make your undergraduate experience meaningful and we love having those conversations. Um, so I always say, you know, hey, if you have a question but you don't really know where to go to, come to your advisor. We're that wonderful first point of contact and the first time that you'll be able to interact with us is orientation. Um, so please do not be afraid to ask questions. There's no such thing as a stupid question. Um, it, it just prompts um, so much more conversation um, and we love having it and we just want uh, to help you all make your experience meaningful. All right, thank you. And Mary with CCIE. Well, I hope to be maybe 30 seconds since Cassidy and Delia said it all already, but as usual, I am still going to talk. So anyhow, people, please be prepared for orientation. Take your time to go through the web course. Take notes. When you are reading something and you have a question, write it down so when we have the day of, the online orientation, when all the advisors from our office are there available to assist you, that we can answer all those questions. And Delia mentioned that please bring, have with you test course if you have unofficial ones. If you did do enrollment, please have a list in front of you so you can help us make sure that we provide you the best advice when it comes to your schedule planning. Great. And Edwina with the Rosen College. 
So again, I echo everything that uh, all of my colleagues um, have mentioned. Um, the one thing that I, I will say uh, that I don't think was mentioned, um, if you need to turn in anything to health services or admissions, those holds <laughs> um, will become a problem come registration. So please, if there is any hold on your account, try to get that taken care of before your orientation day. That will make your life, our life, everybody's life so much easier. Um, again, just a little bit echoing. Unfortunately, we don't get um, updated information at the time. So having your your transcripts, your test scores already there with you will definitely help. And uh, just on top of that, if you think that you've already taken a course, please do not sign up for that class, you know, your first semester. Always ask an advisor, advisor, just like Cassidy mentioned, talk to us. Don't be afraid to ask a question. Say, I'm not familiar. I don't think like I took this class, but I don't know if it'll count. Ask us, because then we'll be able to help you figure that out whether or not you need to take that class or not. Um, so yeah, that's my last tidbit of advice. Hope to see you guys at orientation. Okay, thank you so much. It's always a wealth of knowledge when we hear from our academic advisors and their teams from across campus. Um, to everyone who's joined us tonight, your academic success is important to all of us at UCF and you've got great resources. I can't stress that enough. Um, if you have already paid your enrollment deposit and you haven't registered for orientation, go ahead and do so. The earlier you register for orientation, the earlier you get to talk to our academic advisors about your particular class schedule. And then um, if you haven't paid your deposit, you have until May 1st to save your spot at UCF. And once you've paid that deposit, you'll be able to register for orientation. Um, so on that note, thank you for your interest in UCF. Have a good evening. For those of you that are interested in housing, please join me at 615 in the webinar. I put the link in the chat and um, go Knights and charge on. Thanks everybody.